Hello everyone and welcome back to today's analysis. For now the 41st episode I'm going to analyze none other than Steve Rogers, also known as Captain America, the one of the main protagonists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. An iconic superhero in the pop culture, Captain America could easily be viewed by everyone as the perfect embodiment of all American values. And in this episode I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout the MCU, specifically the Avengers Tetralogy and the Captain America Trilogy, or Tetralogy given that it's the fourth time in Captain America film that is still in the making, now about the time of this video. So in order to analyze Steve Rogers and his journey from a simple orphan born with health problems to the iconic superhero he has ultimately become. Now without further ado, let's dive in. Stephen Grant Rogers was born on July 4th, 1918 in New York City. While much about his early life is unknown, all that we know is the fact that he was born with health problems, as he was very physically weak and even incapable to go past the age of 30. His father fought in World War I and eventually died, and his mother died in the 1920s due to the Spanish flu pandemic, and thus Steve was raised mostly by his aunt. As World War II started from 1939 to 1945, Steve officially joined the Super Soldier Program, a scientific program founded by the US government in order to create super soldiers to help the United States throughout the war. And Steve officially volunteered himself, and he proved to be the only successful test subject, as using the Super Soldier Serum in enhancing his muscular abilities, he enhanced levels of strength, speed, durability, stamina, reflexes, and even longevity and even faster healing, making him a superhero in all but name. And this is exactly how the magnificent Captain America was born, and he held the United States against the Nazi Germany, against his arch nemesis and Nazi counterpart, Red Skull of the Nazi Germany, as well as the very leader of Hydra, a society that aims to bring life back on Earth, and then Red Skull redirected his purpose to world domination. Thankfully for everyone, he was ultimately stopped by Steve, as when Red Skull discovered the Tesseract and wanted to use his power to decimate half of the planet, Steve managed to defeat him and officially managed to thwart the Nazi plot for world domination. However, he remained trapped into the ship and frozen underground for roughly 70 years. But while above him, the United States won World War II and the Nazis were defeated, as well as eventually winning the Cold War against the Soviet Union and Steve remained for decades frozen underground inside the ship until 2011 when S.H.I.E.L.D. led by Nick Fury managed to uncover him and unfreeze him back. Now into the modern world Steve was very confused given the fact that he spent nearly 70 years in twice, but it was clear to him that he is needed by the S.H.I.E.L.D. in order to help to maintain the world stability. And by 2012 when Loki and the Kitauri launched an invasion of Earth, he along with other superheroes such as Hulk Iron Man, Black Widow and Hawkeye all teamed up together to become the Avengers, managing to defeat Loki as well as confiscating the Tesseract and the, and the Guitar Receptor in the process. And now, officially Steve Manson continued a career as both as part of the Avengers but also a solo career as well, as well as coming in conflict with Hydra once again and with his longtime friend Bucky Barnes, who is better known now as the Winter Soldier, as he is used by the Hydra and brainwashing you know, to kill all the people that Hydra deems as a threat. Thankfully, Steve managed to save his longtime friend and ultimately redeem him in the process, and managed to defeat the Hydra for the time being and foil his plans for world domination. And by 2015, the Avengers team up again in you know, order to stop Ultron. The malevolent AI wanted to exterminate the humanity and to replace everyone with machines. Thankfully, this didn't come to fruition, and Ultron and all his army of evil robots were ultimately destroyed in the process, and the Avengers got new members such as Scarlet Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, and uh, the Vision, who ultimately joined the Avengers. But unfortunately, the events of Sokovia ultimately led to the Avengers temporarily disbanding, given the fact that the US government wanted for them to sign an act that would ultimately put them under the control of the government, and the Avengers now officially splintered into groups, one led by Iron Man who opposed the government, and one led by Captain America himself who actually wanted for the Avengers to be controlled by the US government. And with this, the civil war ultimately concluded with Baron Hal Muzimo, the true mastermind being, being officially imprisoned for all his crimes. But the true enemy will ultimately come in 2018, in Thanos, the mad titan who wanted to gather all the infinity stones in order to wipe out half of all life. And with this the Avengers also team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Masters of Mystic Arts in order to, de to defeat him. Tragically, they all have lost. 
Thanos single-handedly managed to succeed in his goal to wipe out all universal life. Thankfully, Steve was one of the people who managed to survive, and after hunting down Thanos to recover the stones and bring everyone back, this proved to be fruitless, as he destroyed the stones in order to make sure that that won't happen, resulting Thanos' own death at the hands of Thor. And with the Avengers officially mm, being broken by their defeat, as they will spend the next five years in order to find a way how to bring everyone back. And by 2023, with the return of Ant-Man, they managed to get and find a solution. Time travel, traveling through different re alternate timelines, you know, together in different Infinity Stones, and bring them together to bring everyone back. Succeeding with Hulk and performing the blip, they managed to bring everyone back. But now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves, is Captain America good? The answer to the question is definitely yes. Captain America is genuinely a good person. He does care about everyone, nevertheless. And he managed to defeat an alternate evil version of Thanos who came to their timeline to destroy the universe, to avenge his original self. And thankfully, he has failed, as Tony officially sacrificed himself in order to defeat the Mad Titan once and for all. And following Tony's funeral, Steve offered himself to take all the Infinity Stones back to their original timelines. But he finally went back in time in 1945 to give to Peggy the dance that he promised to her. And he will see him now an older Steve Rogers, who is now fully retired and lived a long and happy life on Oi Peggy, and officially passed the shield to the Falcon, officially passing the mantle to the next superhero who he deemed worthy to carry out in his legacy. So in the end, who is Captain America? He's nothing more but a simple man born with problems that will ultimately manage to solve them through scientific means. Means they will ultimately cause him to become a superhero and a literal symbol of freedom and equality into an unjust world. Uh, he one of the most iconic superheroes in cinematic history, if not in all of pop culture. Thank you all for doing this new episode in today's analysis. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe, everyone, and have a nice day. Well, I couldn't meet my best girl. Not when she owes me a date.